Greetings and welcome to this uh, first episode of my Panther D Kursk anniversary subject. I'm really happy to be uh, taking the opportunity to build this. And what do we have today? We have Zvezda's Panther D 135th tank. Came out sometime in 2014 and it's been on the shelf for some time so I'm looking forward to building this tank and sharing it and offering it at the 75th anniversary group build being hosted by our friends Nigel Wells and Michael Campbell. One of the great features of this kit is it comes with a partial interior for the turret. Unfortunately I will not be using mine as my tank is going to be buttoned up and my general philosophy on this subject has usually been to avoid any construction that will not be seen as much as possible. It's just for me it just kind of quickens the build for me and I can focus on other parts of the build. But it is a beautiful uh, interior and I did manage to keep a few pieces so hopefully I can recycle them and use them on future projects sometime down the road. The instructions, they're pretty straightforward. There's been a few spots that are that need correction or maybe some rewriting, especially when it comes to the tank track construction. But for the most part, I was pretty impressed with the instructions provided. They were pretty straightforward and had uh, ample opportunity to explain where things go. The first part of the instructions is going to be the uh, the turret and the commander's cupola. And as we can see here, we have four marvelous pieces that all have to get sandwiched in and glued. Uh, this is going to pose quite a challenge as to whether or not I need to do any filling or things like that. So I'll definitely have to do a bit of resource and research. And here's the drive fit element that we'll be working on. It all comes together pretty well. Unfortunately, there were some sizable gaps where uh, pieces came together, especially around the periscopes. And so I'm going to do a little bit of background checking and look at some photographs to see whether or not the cupola is in fact one solid drum. And here we have a rendering from a reference book and according to this picture we see a pretty solid drum that is uh, quite seamless around the periscopes. So this is going to force my hand to try to clean it up clean it up as much as possible using whatever resources and materials I have at hand on my workbench. And just to be certain I took an opportunity to look at some pictures and from what I can see with my naked eyeballs definitely is a seamless drum around the periscopes which is only going to strengthen my resolve to make sure that I get these things filled using whatever skills I have with all my uh, combined experiences and whatever my brain has in storage. This should be quite a challenge. Uh, and here we have another picture of a different Panther D, but again I'm having a hard time finding any seams around those periscopes. So. So right out of the gate, this kit is posing some challenges. Uh, I'm not one to tolerate seams, so let's get the uh, work gloves on and get cracking. Well, here we have a breakdown. I have the uh, the main drum, and you can see those gaps a little bit better. Those black hash marks in between the periscopes are permanent markers and I'm marking sinkholes that I found in the drums. So it will be, uh, this is going to be a lot of fun so get your seat belts on and enjoy the ride. 
first order of business was to mask the, uh, the bottom lip of the drum and then to take some silly putty and fill in the periscopes. This guarantees that I will have uh, no smears or blobs in places that I do not want Mr. Surfacer. And with a little bit of a, a paintbrush and some Mr. Surfacer 500, I just put a few dots of the putty on the targeted seam lines and let it set for a few seconds. And after a few seconds to let it set, I gently removed the masking tape. That way it could uh, separate from the putty and uh, leave no, no impediments. Afterwards, I just let the putty set and cure for 24 hours and then I could proceed with sanding. I then proceeded using various grades and grits of sandpaper. I started off with a little bit of 400, working my way up to 600, and working my way up to thousands. And uh, though it looks a little rough in the pictures, it looks great in reality, and it's gonna look really nice once painted, having all those seams nicely filled very excited about how this came out. And here we have the turret. It looks like we have three pieces. It's a split barrel with a ring inside the muzzle brake. And uh, it's going to pose a little bit of a challenge. I did hem and haw and think about ways to work around it. One being just get an aluminum barrel. Uh, but I find those things to be a bit of a pain with their sensitivity to uh, paint adhesion. And just prior to gluing, I just want to make sure that everything was clean with regards to flash and all my sprue gates because the barrel should be nice and smooth as much as possible. And uh, all I did was stick that little ring inside a needle file and gently glue it in its place and uh, bring those halves together with a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin. And here we have the glued barrel. It's been curing for 24 hours. And there is a little bit of seams and a few uh, sinkholes. But because it's a nice cylinder and the uh, it's a very smooth finish, there was no problem adding a little bit of extra glue and polishing it off with some uh, Mr. Surfacer 500 putty applied with a used dirty brush to get it all uh, nicely filled. And once it was filled, it was all sanded and ready to go. My backup, just in case things were to go a little awry, <laughs> which uh, is normal if you're uh, working on the bench as long as I have. So uh, this was a uh, R&B barrel, I believe from Poland, but I could be wrong. Uh, it's a fine piece of work. And luckily, I can use it on another panther sometime down the road. God knows I have plenty of panthers in the stash. And here we go. That's a wonderful barrel. Looking fine. Let's move on to that turret. Here we go. Here's the blow up map from the instructions. Bringing the bottom uh, gun plate and the turret together and adding all the bits and bobs that come with this kit. I opted not to use any of the interior, so I won't need the uh, turret basket at all. Uh, but I definitely will need that turret ring, so let's take a look and see what kind of uh, interesting things I need to work on to get it built. Ah uh, yes, the wonderful ejection pin marks. They are the bane of every model builder's existence. Um, for a lot of model builders, and not, it's not been much of an issue, but um, for me it is. It definitely causes problems at uh, model shows all over the, the country here. So I have become, it's just a routine to fill them, to get them cleaned, sanded, and looking flawlessly as possible. And here we are. I used, uh, I believe I used Mr. Surfacer, but I could be wrong. To me, a basic putty is also a good piece. And here's another uh, example of the ejection pin marks on the inside of the turret. And uh, it's a little rough, 
But again, it's all going to be buttoned up, so none of this will be seen. Um, but that's just the way it is with uh, these kits. Injection part and injection pin marks seem to be the. Uh, it's a must, unfortunately. One of the real problems I had was this piece in the front turret. There's this huge gaping line, so I had to stuff it with uh, bits of styrene sheet and stretch sprue, and I just cemented it all right in, welded it shut, and then proceeded with um, Tamiya basic putty and sanded the heck out of it just to uh, get it all cleaned up. It's really one of the big eyesores. Another eyesore is the uh, on the sides of the gun mantlet. You can see in this picture there's like a little hairline. It's like a C. And it's right behind the gun mantlet and it's right in front of the, the front of the turret. And unfortunately the kit design, the uh, the measurements were off on both sides. One was an enormously huge hole and the other side was a little bit of a hairline crack. So I, I understand that Zvezda tried to mimic that C line. You can see another picture in this rendering. There's like a, a double C. One is the mantlet, gun mantlet, and the other one is that, that mantlet side. And I decided in the end to just fill it and don't even bother mimicking it. There's an aspect of this hobby where you have to draw the line between accuracy and fun and I chose to have fun and just fill it and be done with it. So here's a nice example of that, that, that line, that C line, it's a nice shadow in there and it just looked awful, it just didn't look right to me. My gut was saying, good God man, fill that thing, be done with it. So one side was filled with milliput putty and I believe it's the image you see right here and the reverse side was filled with um, to me a basic putty. So one will be yellow and one will be gray. And here's the other side. I don't know which side which one was bigger, but definitely both sides were uneven. And I really spent a considerable amount of time sanding this. It, one sand over wasn't enough. I had to kind of sand it. There's still some pits, air bubbles. Not so much with the milliput, but definitely with the Tamiya Basic. It was uh, toilsome. So there was actually maybe several layers of reapplication of putty and, and cleaning it up and then sanding it. And of course sanding these small pieces, it's a real pain. So he used uh, various techniques of sanding blocks and different origami folds of sanding paper. But in the end, it came out okay. Um, it actually has a nice texture to it that's more, uh, more accurate to what the... Uh, the steel would look like. So let's continue on. Here we go with the uh, the milliput putty we see on the starboard side of that mantlet. You can see where that, that S line was and I just filled it nice and flush with that front piece and um, it looks good enough to me. You know, I'm just happy that, uh, that I got it, it worked and that, that, that unevenness is gone. Here's on the port side with the, the basic Tamiya. Again, several several coats and sanding, lots of sanding, and uh, it's all cleaned up and um, it's all flush. So it'll look really nice once painted and cleaned up. Happy with the results. You can see where the turret, overall the turret sides, uh, definitely some unevenness and some sink marks in the plastic. Uh, used a little bit of a uh, to me a basic and some Mr. Surfacer sanded it with the various grits that I've mentioned and uh, it's all nice and smooth ready for painting here's the rear end you get that rear rear hatch looks nice and sharp and pistol ports and uh, again some of those uh, pesky little sanding marks but all that's gonna come to fruition all that hard labor comes really nice after the paint job is done and finally, the turret is complete and uh, very happy with the results. Definitely some hang-ups and some obstacles, impediments, 
But you know that comes with model building. It doesn't matter what package, what brand you use, you're gonna run into problems. That's that's the name of the game in this hobby, or basically any hobby really. That's uh, and that's the challenge. And sometimes that can be fun too. So I've really enjoyed this uh, this part of the build. Well, friends, I need to leave you here at the turret, and I need to make my walk towards the uh, the Panther Hull. And start working on that so that I can start filming episode two. So you guys stay on standby, and I'll see you next time on YouTube. Model on, have fun, and see you later. Thank you. Goodbye.